if you're a content creator who is in, shall we say, mid-life territory, to put it kindly, then you should probably go ahead and quit. Especially if you are running a family home and juggling that with running a business, looking after children, maybe even looking after aging parents, and you're trying to churn out content all at the same time, then yeah, you should probably just give up now. Unless your mindset has these three key things. I don't know about you, but sometimes for me, it really does seem like these younger creators can just pop out viral content with ease. I'm sure it's not easy, but from an outside looking in, it looks a lot easier than it does for me. And I often feel like I'm just left standing at the starting line, staring at their dust. It's disheartening to say the least, and it can leave a massive dent in your confidence too. I often find myself questioning whether there's something wrong with me. Am I even cut out for this? Is 45 too old to even get into the content creation game? All of these spiraling negative thoughts that can just send you on that downward spiral. But these challenges are exactly why I need to keep going. And so should you if you are a middle aged content creator. I've recently been listening to the audible book of The Gap in the Game by Dr. Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. And in chapter six, there are some real nuggets that are going to help middle aged content creators turn the challenges that they are facing into to gains that are actually going to build them up and help them succeed. So let's get into those three transformative mindset shifts that can really help us as middle-aged content creators redefine our journeys. Mindset shift number one, embrace the valleys. Because let's face it, when you're running a family home, you're building a business, you're trying to create content at the same time, it's going to be challenging. Things are going to be tough, but you can't start wasting your energy complaining about it. You need to embrace those challenges. Now in the book, Hardy talks about the peaks and the valleys of life and that it can be a real roller coaster, whether it's in your business life, in your personal life, your professional life, you're going to go through the highs of big successes followed by crushing lows of real challenging situations. And what Hardy comments in the book is that good things happen because of what we do when we're in our valleys and that we can experience higher peaks when we learn to accept and work with our lowest valleys. So Joyce Mayers has a phrase that I really love. Happiness is about what's happening and it's so true. It's so easy to be happy when good things are happening to you. Now, the real test of your uh, perseverance of your character is how you respond when not so good things are happening to you. So learning to accept the challenges that you're facing, juggling content creation with building a business and still running a family home. Look for ways in which you can make it easy. Please don't waste your time moaning about you can't do this or coming up with the reasons of why you're not going to just hit record, why you're not going to just start outlining an article in Medium. Just start somewhere. Do what Austin Cleon says, show your work. It's got to start somewhere and we're building a muscle, we're developing it. So roll up your sleeves and use your energy wisely and use it to embrace those valleys. Mindset shift number two, be psychologically flexible. Now, you see, if you're constantly complaining about how the younger creators have it so much easier, they don't have as many commitments as you, that it's more difficult because you've got X, Y and Z and all of these mid middle age responsibilities on your head, then again, you are becoming not only stuck in the gap, as Benjamin Hardy would put it, but you're also being psychologically rigid in terms of you're only focusing on the reasons of why you can't do something or why it's easier for someone else. And I kind of touched on this in mindset shift number one, when we're learning to embrace our valleys, the two kind of go hand in hand, embracing the valleys and learning to be psychologically flexible. So I've just touched on being psychologically rigid. 
what exactly does it mean? Well, psychological rigidity is where you find it hard to adapt to changes in life because you're maintaining a strict and inflexible approach to situations and problems. So this is the moaning about how you can't do something because of this reason, that reason and the other and how it's so much easier for person X or person Y because they can do what they want when they want, blah, blah, blah. So this mindset is going to hinder your ability to manage your emotions, yeah? Cope with stress and could potentially lead to mental health issues. Here's where we need to adopt the ability to be open to experiences, especially if they're unpleasant and we need to learn to adjust our mindset accordingly. Life is not going to be a bed of roses and building a business and creating content is not going to be simple. Yes, anyone can write, anyone can hit record, but just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's easy. So we want to be psychologically flexible, which means we're not only able to easily adapt to changing situations, but we're also able to come up with a ton of creative solutions to our challenges and manage our emotions better. So again, it's for me, I feel like it links into the broaden and build theory. And I can't remember the name, I think it's Barbara. Oh, Fed Fredrickson did a study where they were looking at how people, how resilient they are, how they can come up with different ideas, different creative solutions based on whether they were in a positive mindset or a negative mindset. And they would prime participants with um, having them watch um, sort of a sad movie and see how that affected their ability to come up with solutions to a very simple problem. And it kind of blew me away in terms of the people People that had were primed negatively were able to come up with just a few solutions to a problem whereas the people who just had no priming came up with kind of like the middle ground and then people who had been primed with a positive mindset they actually came up with loads of solutions so this is where being positive embracing our valleys is going to help us become psychologically flexible and when we're psychologically flexible we're going to come up with more creative solutions so instead of moaning that oh you can't come up with content you don't have the time to hit record you can't write an article right now instead of having all of this very rigid fixed reasons why you can't do something you need to shift into that positive mindset of okay I'm facing a challenge of being able to do this how can I let it be easy? What can I do? Can I outline the skeleton of an article? Can I just hit record and record whatever and get like the blech out of the way and then record something better afterwards? Can I just record something and hit publish but actually just have it unlisted? Whatever it is that you've got to do to overcome the barriers and the reasons why you can't do something, Whatever it is that you can do to circumvent that, that's what you need to do to start being in that positive mindset and being psychologically flexible. Now, this leads us nicely into mindset shift number three, which is reframing the story. You see, it's very easy to paint a negative picture when you are faced with a lot of challenges. But what most people don't know is that you can rewrite that story. You don't have to encode it into your memory as something heavy and negative. You can rewrite it as something where you've looked for the lessons and you've found the things that you've learned, the things that you've discovered, the positives that you can take from certain situations. So again, let's use that same example. If you're writing the story that, oh, I've got too much on my plate, I'm running a home, I'm looking after kids, I'm trying to build a business, I don't have time to create content because of those reasons, then you're hardwiring that into your brain as being the be all and end all of the situation. When in actual fact, you can rewrite it. One of the scripts that I'm kind of playing on repeat in my brain a little bit at the moment is that I'm a struggling entrepreneur who doesn't have the time to invest in my business that I would like to invest because I have other commitments and I just can't blah 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 and it's not a great script to be playing to myself to be honest it's not going to make me feel particularly successful 
So I'm trying my best to create a new mantra, to reframe that story, to taking the challenges that I'm facing and instead of playing them as this negative script in my head, I'm reframing them and playing them as I am, instead of a struggling entrepreneur, I am a resilient solopreneur. Instead of, I don't have time to do this because of my other commitments, I have children that I still need to look after, I'm turning it to, I am juggling family life and I'm balancing that with building a business. And it's just those little tweaks to the language that we use when we speak to ourselves that can make a massive difference. Yeah, it's simple enough, but to actually do it, it's not easy. It's quite difficult, especially if those scripts have been playing quite a lot in your head. From a psychological standpoint, it's really easy for us to focus on the negatives because we are hardwired to um, keep ourselves safe, really. This is why we focus on negative things. So our brain can see where danger might be and stop us from falling into that danger zone. But this way of thinking, this psychological, almost like self-preservation, it's not doing us any favours in this modern life, especially in modern middle life. Now it's time for those next actions because we really want to put into practice what we've just covered in this episode. So first up, at the end of your working day, you're going to want to spend a little bit of time reflecting on any content creation challenges that you may have faced. Next, you're going to maybe want to grab a journal, but you're going to want to think about how you approached those challenges or what kind of mindset were you in with how you dealt with them. Were you embracing valleys? Were you being psychologically rigid or were you being psychologically flexible? And do you need to maybe reframe the story that you're telling yourself in terms of why you did or didn't create content today? And finally, try and make it a regular practice to reflect on your day and think about how you approached your challenges and the mindset that you had whilst you were dealing with those challenges. Even if it's after the fact and you think, oh, actually, maybe I could have dealt with it that way, it's good to take time to note that down because it's going to help you turn more towards that path in the future rather than repeating the negative action from the past. And remember, as a midlife content creator, you have way more experience to draw on compared to younger counterparts. So use these mindset shifts to really build Build that resilience that you're going to need to boost your self-confidence and to help you have a more positive outlook on the work that you're doing because it is valuable. We need to see more people like us that make the journey of creating a business and running a business and running a family home. We need to see how we can make productivity and all of those kind of self-improvement things relatable to our season of life. And that's only gonna happen if folks like you and me actually get on the platform and share our experiences. So keep on going. I shall catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.